Put on your glasses and hold on to your heads because we have the best thing to happen to art since Banksy's Dismaland. Welcome to Dismaland. Enjoy. Velvet Buzzsaw is a scathing portrayal of the world of high-end art, with everyone in it seemingly forgetting what the real purpose of art is, and paying a bloody price for it. So in this video I want to explain this film's ending, the monster, and some of the cool details you may have missed along the way. The intro itself is a work of art, stop-motion animation hinting at what's to come. Fire, a hanging man, the bloody footsteps the kids spread around when Gretchen dies, the monkeys attacking through the painting, morph smash glasses, and the paint that seeps into Josephina's skin. We're then transported to an art exhibit in Miami and introduced to Morph Vanderwalt, a well-respected art critic at the top of his game. In fact, his reviews can make or break an artist, and he is accosted by several, such as Claudio, who wants him to look at Hobo Man, a representation of what has become of America. Notice his American vest mimicking that of the Star-Spangled Banner, a decrepit old man on his last leg. Literally. He recalls times of greatness, telling Morph that he once built a railroad, railroads playing a pivotal role in the creation of America and catapulting the nation to greatness. America, yeah. We're also introduced to the Sphere, a special piece of art which Morph absolutely adores, giving it a positive review and having its price soar on the art market. Rodora here explains that it creates a unique sensation depending on each person. This unique sensation of putting your hand in something to feel again is juxtaposed when Morph puts his hand up Josephina's dress, and also when Gretchen puts her hand in and has it brutally dismembered, resulting in her death. Hey, and it's good to see Velvet Buzzsaw as a prequel to Bird Box with another role for John Malkovich. At the art after party, Morph consoles Josephina, Rodora's assistant who's just been dumped by her artist boyfriend Ricky. She tells him, I'm through dating artists. They're already in a relationship. And what does she do? Ends up dating an artist and cheating on Morph with an artist. The very thing she accused her ex of doing. John Don Don over here, love that name, is an art agent trying to poach respected artist Piers, who is currently suffering from artist block. Piers has a 17 year long relationship with Rodora and is hesitant to jump ship with Don Don. Morph seems to be pretty comfortable as he reviews an exhibit called GoPro Kindergarten, in which GoPros are attached to kindergartners so we can see the world from their perspective. And I don't know if it's just me, but watching kindergartners naked doesn't seem like the greatest choice. How are you? Why don't you have a seat right over there? No problem. Ed, Morph's lover, reads the review, but what we'll find out later is that he's actually a spy for Rodora. Since Morph's reviews are so influential, if Rodora can get the advanced review, she can position herself to either buy or sell the work, depending on whether it will benefit her. Think of it as art insider trading. Here at Josephina's apartment, she uncovers a dead man who we'll later find out is Vetral Dees. We'll get to him in a bit, but this hiccup makes her late for work, in which Rodora scolds her. If Josephina wants to be her protege, she'll have to step it up and prove it to her. And this is very important in understanding her character arc. We get a brief glimpse of Rodora's tattoo here which says no death no art 1983 which is a reference to her friend and collaborator Pollyanna who died of an overdose in 1983 they were part of a punk group called Velvet Buzzsaw her artist name hence the tattoo on the back of her neck she later tells Piers when he's struggling with alcoholism that she couldn't handle it that's why she gave up art you sometimes need to step back and do something for nobody but yourself so she gives him her private beach house to get away from it all to sober up and find himself again. Which we later find out he does. If you stayed for the end credits, you'll see this scene where Piers has finally found himself again, creating art along the beach. It's beautiful. Back at Josephina's, a property manager tells her that the old man had tons of art that he requested be destroyed. He also scrapes off his mailbox tag and we can see his name, Vetral Dees, which is an anagram for three things. Devil C Art, Evil Art Seed, and C Lived Art. So she goes into his apartment and finds out that he's a masterful artist. This just might be the thing Josephina needs to gain some traction at Rodora's company. In the apartment, you'll notice Deese was a hoarder and recluse. He used his pain and focused it in his paintings, studying for masters like Rembrandt, who you can see on the wall. The painting there is a self-portrait of Rembrandt, just like the painting in the middle here is a self-portrait of Deese. Its eyes follow Josephina around the room, Kind of like how many of Rembrandt 
Rembrandt's paintings do this in a phenomenon known as linear perspective. It's here we get the first supernatural element of the movie, a piece of his painting seemingly self-emulates. Whoever made these pictures never wanted them to be seen. Josephina shows the work to Morph, who says the work speaks to him. It's amazing, and we get this great transition from Morph seeing the work to an art installation of a family watching a jackpot commercial. For Josefina, she has hit that jackpot with these paintings. Rodora, however, finds out about the art and essentially pressures Josefina into giving it to her in exchange for money and a partnership within the company. So Josefina gets what she wants, but with a catch. The art is now under the control of her boss. And this begins Josefina's eventual spiral into tragedy. She becomes the very thing she once despised in Rodora all about the money and not about the art. This is encapsulated when Damrish leaves Rodora's gallery and she chastises him, saying, You'd give that up for what? Some sad garage space peddling graffiti murals. Jesus, what's the point of art if nobody sees it? Josefina doesn't understand what art is about. It's not what others think. It's about expression. It's about an artist creating for themselves and not others. Damrish understands this. So does Piers in the end who regains his creativity, creating on the beach for no one to see, for it to be washed away later. He is creating for himself. About a half hour into the film, we also get our first glimpse of one of the paintings bleeding. As we later find out from Gita, some Someone who analyzes paintings both chemically and structurally, every painting contains Deese's own blood, which was used to create the reds and blacks. Part of Deese is in every painting, both emotionally and physically. Private investigator finds that Deese was tortured as a child by his father, so much so that Deese burned his father alive and was sent to a menstrual institution, one that did tests on its subjects. He was released three decades later, where he spent 42 years as a janitor, lived off the grid, and painted. And his pain is seen through his paintings, like the contorted figures reaching out here, the two-faced child here, or the punished child here. The child and father being a representation of Deese and his father. Josefina continues her downward spiral by convincing Morph to do a bad review to sink her ex's art show. And it works. In fact, the review makes Ricky, the ex, so mad he crashes his car and that puts him into a coma. We're starting to see a pattern here how all the characters who do bad things are later killed by Deese's spirit. And up next is Bryson who opens the art he shouldn't have. You'll notice the eyes constantly watching over him. He's been itching to get a hold of this work since sneaking a peek at Josefina's desk. This backfires when cigarette ashes light on fire and he crashes into a gas station, conveniently called Humble. This is a great name for a station since almost none of the characters in this film are humble. They're the exact opposite. Bryson is paying the price and literally crashing into being humbled. And here we see the first instance of Deese's spirit being able to not only control his own art, but others. This monkey picture comes alive and brutally mauls Bryson to death, just like how Rodora told Damrish that the desire for art charges, mauls, and devours. When Morph tells Rodora that Deese's spirit has imbued itself in his art, Rodora brushes it off, saying, All art is dangerous, Morph. And dangerous indeed. Don Don is the next to die when, on the eve of exposing Deese and his murderous past, is killed by his own art installation and hung to death. It's poor Coco who finds him dead. And also Gretchen. And also Morph. <laughs> Deese, the quote-unquote monster spirit in this movie, doesn't just willy-nilly kill anyone. You'll notice the characters in this film who die are the ones who don't respect art. Josefina, Rodora, and Don Don are all in it for the money. In fact, Don Don doesn't know jack about art. He walks into Pierce's studio and thinks the trash is an installation. Morph uses his reviews to make or break careers, like how his review of Roboman killed Claudio's sale, or his purposely negative review of Ricky's art show literally drove the man into a coma. He is killed by the very thing he helped destroy in his review. Hobo Man, who, in a brilliant moment of symbolism, crushes his designer glasses after he chastised the optometrist for the cheap ones he had to wear for a few hours after his exam. Gretchen is another interesting case. She starts off on the right side. She works for a museum where art can be viewed by normal people and not just the super wealthy. Listen to what she says here. Look, I came to the museum because I wanted to change the world through art. But the wealthy vacuum up everything, except crumbs. But Gretchen ends up turning her back on those values, becoming the art advisor to a wealthy man. A man who purchased the sphere and numerous Deese paintings. She even strong arms her former employees into giving in to her clients' demands. 
but the strong arm won't last long as it's brutally ripped apart in the sphere after Deez's spirit takes control. Josephina, who has the biggest change in the film, becomes a part of the graffiti wall after her confrontation with Damrish. For her, art is only high-end, or not art at all, and Rodora, who thinks she may have outwitted the spirit after getting rid of every piece of art in her home, fails to realize that the tattoo of Velvet Buzzsaw on her neck is in fact a form of art. And we all know how that turns out. But look at the characters who respected art. We have Piers who is able to reconnect with his creativity, Damrish who ends up going back to his roots rather than making art for the elite, and then there's poor Coco. She ends up having to move back to Michigan with her mom, but gets a sweet cat out of it. The same cat that used to belong to Deese. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, is the spirit of Deese trapped in this cat? When Rodora is killed by her velvet buzzsaw, the scene immediately cuts to the cat, who lets out a terrifying scream. Something is definitely causing these attacks, but where it manifests, we may never know. Velvet Buzzsaw has a great ironic ending in that the paintings that once sold for millions are now being sold on the side of the road by hobos for five dollars. When Rodora and Josefina went to the detective, he stated that the only place near where Bryson died was an old hobo camp, so this is likely where all that art went. And it's fitting to see that Deese didn't kill the hobos or Coco or Piers because he only goes after the ones who are abusive, the ones just like his father. In the end, Velvet Buzzsaw is a chilling expose on how we treat art. Is it something to be hoarded and kept to ourselves or shared and spread equally? What are the consequences of both of these paths? And are we willing to live with those consequences? I hope you enjoyed this video. What did you think of Velvet Buzzsaw? I want to hear your comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe with that bell on because I have more videos on the way. And as always, remember, Daddy loves you very much.